Hi, everyone. My name is Ryosuke Ushita, a research fellow at Georgetown University. I'm going to talk about our work on regulatory considerations on centralized aspects of DeFi. This paper is written by Professor James Angel and myself. The DeFi ecosystem is expanding at a faster rate. In terms of total value locked, it increased about 40 times within 12 months. And this illustrates the ecosystem landscape. Smart contract based applications are being built on top of underlying public blockchain, such as Ethereum, and the user interface and the aggregation layer is on top of that. While there are a number of discussion topics, our paper focuses on governance and regulatory issues. As the name of DeFi suggests, DeFi's unique feature is that it is decentralized, which basically means there is no entity in charge of the operation of the financial functions provided by the smart contract. However, that is not always the case. So we paid a close attention to the centralized points, which would have significant implications from a regulatory perspective. The example of a centralized point include uh, admin keys, governance token holders, and uh, many others. So it can be possible that a DeFi project can be highly decentralized, like a Bitcoin without this kind of feature. But uh, uh, for the ongoing DeFi project, it seems they have many of these centralized elements. And this is a terminology in this paper. So DeFi has no established definition at this point in time, but in this paper, we defined it as a financial applications that could consist a part of decentralized financial system. So in other words, some of so-called DeFi may not fit in this definition when it is highly, highly centralized. So firstly, I would like to evaluate the governance of the DeFi before discussing regulatory considerations because uh, regulation is one of the important governing factors, but it's just one of them. So we should understand overall governance mechanism of DeFi before we delve into uh, specific regulatory topics. But the problem is that the DeFi ecosystem is a complex structure composed of several elements and the stakeholders, including uh, individual DeFi project managed by DAOs, underlying public blockchains and the integrators such as Oracle providers and then custody solution providers, as well as aggregator like uh, DEX or lending aggregators. So it is not an easy task to analyze the governance mechanism, but we propose that we should look at both internet governance and the corporate governance as dual reference points. Of course, corporate governance and the internet governance are totally different. Corporate governance is for a traditional corporate that is a centralized entity with hierarchical structure. And the internet governance is for the internet that is a bottom-up global distributed network. So it may sound weird to consider both of them altogether, but we found that the Many DeFi projects managed by DAO has both centralized and decentralized features. And then therefore uh, it can learn a lesson from both well-developed governance framework and its best practices. In this regard, not a few academic academia explore to build uh, sound governance of decentralized financial systems in light of the internet governance lessons Besides, as for the corporate governance applicability, among others, for example, Hacker argued that the complexity induced uncertainty could be reduced and the stability and the order could be strengthened by adapting the corporate governance framework to DAOs. As such, a lot of academic research are going on, but now from, my, from our uh, understanding, 
no in-depth analysis is done so far to combine these different discussions. So our contribution is to provide a governance and a regulatory considerations with a specific focus on the centralized aspect of existing DeFi project. Firstly, let's think about individual DeFi project governance. From our observation, we identified four governing factors, which is on-chain voting by governance token holders, off-chain consensus by community, and the code is low or governance minimization, and finally, a willingness for legal compliance or avoidance. So let's see one by one. So uh, token-based governance, so on-chain voting, could break up the informal power structure of the inner circle, and it could dis distribute power in a fair and a transparent manner. That's one of the advantage of this approach, and it is also promising as a fundraising scheme for open source software community. But it has risks and limitations, including uh, concentration of voting power, and then depending on the design, project design, some specific group could have broad discretion over token holders, like the case of the DAO. And then on-chain voting only reflects the opinion of token holders. Uh, alternatively, it does not necessarily accommodate a wide range of stakeholders' opinion. And that's uh, one way of governing tools, but it's not uh, that a perfect solution. And the next is code is law. And the code is law is a concept of uh, basically relying on the original code and then minimizing as a discretional governance by human intervention. And many blockchain community has tendency to believe that the individuals and organizations cannot be trusted and that social interactions should be managed solely by computer code. And the advantage of this approach is to be able to mitigate the risk of institutionalization of a specific governance process like on-chain voting. But in terms of risks and limitations, um, among others, uh, uh, computer code lacks the flexibility needed to respond to each case like a hacking incident. And then formalized rules is easily gamed or exploited by malicious actors. And sadly, off-chain governance is a critical governing factor, especially in, in the case of some community like Bitcoin or Ethereum. For example, in the case of Bitcoin, various actors such as mining pools, node operators, developers, and exchange, and of course users, decide over uh, critical governance decision, crit critical issues like a protocol update by reaching a consensus or by forking, if not agreed. For the positive side, uh, it could help uh, the community choose what aligns uh, the social norm without relying on a specific governance forces like a token holders. But the uh, potential risks are the lack of transparency due to uh, its, uh, typically its uh, undocumented decision-making process. And it could lead lack of proper governance mechanism, which can be a blocker, especially for protocol update to resolve important dispute. And lastly, the willingness to meet regulatory requirements could be one of driving factors for the decision making. Um, whatever the intention is, it seems that uh, many ongoing projects tend to circumvent hefty financial regulation like uh, ML KYC requirements. But on the other hand, some projects are willing to closely work with regulators and other stakeholders outside of the blockchain ecosystem. Examples of that include uh, Nexus Mutual, which requires KYC to use that, and then open loads initiatives to establish legal entity for the compliance purposes. 
So uh, that's, uh, these are internal or direct factors that affect individual uh, project governance. And then in addition, some factors outside of the individual community could also have large influence on the governance. Uh, maybe I don't have much time to elaborate on, on each topics, but uh, the example of them is uh, interdependent relevant DeFi protocols and the integrators like oracles and the government regulators, of course, and the existing financial system, society, and the infrastructure layers. But I, I try to give uh, just a few uh, examples on each of these. So uh, DeFi protocols are interrelated each other and then, uh, and then uh, the composability out of that is one of the great advantage of DeFi but it seems there is no well, limited agreement among protocols or stakeholders for the division of responsibilities. And no mechanism is put in place to align interest among stakeholders and then to fulfill, to, to, uh, to meet obligation to the outside world. And then um, for the underlying blockchain layer, uh, individual DeFi protocol is heavily dependent on the security, scalability, interoperability, and the governance of the infra infrastructure layers. And uh, uh, for the existing financial system, the interrelationship with uh, such uh, traditional entities is another important factor, at least in the future, because the border between the DeFi and the centralized finance, like uh, a centralized exchange, is likely to become vague going forward. And the government and the regulators are, of course, uh, are the critical factors, and I will discuss it in detail later uh, from now on. So uh, again, regulation is uh, a key constraint to DeFi project. And as discussed by some academia like uh, De Philip Fink, Aaron, and uh, Takanashi, existing regulatory framework may not work well for the fully or highly decentralized protocol due to its unique features such as anonymity, um, reduced traceability, lack of legal entity, and the unstoppable nature of the protocol. But it is possible that the current regulatory framework and the enforcement practices capture some DeFi projects, which has a variety of centralized elements. That's why uh, we examined regulatory constellations on centralized points of DeFi to explore appropriate regulatory approach and the governance mechanism for healthy and the sustainable development of the ecosystem. And one of the big centralized point in question is admin keys or backdoor. So regulate, regulatory bodies like uh, uh, SEC is taking this admin key function seriously to assess whether uh, the developer is liable for the unlawful financial service provisions by a smart contract. In the case of uh, ETH Delta lawsuits, SEC charged the founder of the DEX uh, with operating an unregistered exchange in, back in 2018. The SEC pointed out the concentration of power to the founders exampled by his exclusive access to the private key or admin keys for the administer account. So uh, basically admin key holders uh, like this founder could take actions at their will, like freezing stolen tokens. And it can be done voluntarily, voluntarily or by, by order or request from regulators or courts. So regulators may wish to require the key holders to comply with the same regulations that are existing financial institutions like banks uh, providing comparable services are required to abide by. And furthermore, regulators might deem a DeFi protocol without admin key as uh, illegal due to its unstoppable nature. But uh, at the same time, admin keys create uh, risks such as custody risk of the admin keys. So basically, users have no idea on how the key is 
securely managed. So that's a, that's a big security risk. So uh, yeah, not so the existence of admin key is not a bad thing for regulators from regulatory enforceability perspective, but they should also pay attention to the negative aspect of the admin key. And then another critical factor we believe is a governance token. So large token holders uh, occupy a dominant power, dominant position in decision making. So uh, as an example, Uniswap's Uni, 40% uh, of that is going to distribute to the uh, inner members such as venture capitalists and the developers. And then, yeah, token, such token-based mechanics could be captured uh, by authorities. Regulators could at least identify uh, the address that hold large tokens and then uh, possibly the uh, real identity of the large token, large token holders. So uh, it, uh, it's a very important aspect for regulators to think about uh, entity-based regulations. And another big issue is applicability of governance token as securities. Of course, uh, regulation is different among jurisdictions, and then token design and the distribution model and the intention of such people are different among projects. So obviously, uh, there is no uh, one fits for all answer, but I, I just wanted to provide a few uh, considerations. So, uh, the token, governance token, is often burned for the sake of token holders' interest to, to give their, 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 uh, their uh, economic incentives. But uh, burning token is very much similar to share buyback in traditional corporate finance. And it has the same economic implications as dividend. So uh, the applicability of security maybe depend on this kind of uh, characteristics of tokens. And the uh, underlying motivation of both token holders and the issuers are of course important. And then uh, the degree of distribution could also affect the judgment by regulators. And so uh, in the case of United States, Ethereum's ETH was securities at the time of issuance, but now regarded as commodity as the influence of it Ethereum Foundation declined as network grows. And then another uh, consideration is disclosure requirement for market integrities. So uh, there's a lot of other discussion topics, but uh, in summary, uh, governance token issues could increase control points for regulators rather than uh, its original intention to decentralize the decision making. And then there is uh, many other uh, centralized point like uh, uh, centralized collateral, like uh, 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 centralized ca central centrally custodied uh, stable coins like a USDT and the uh, aggregators and the legal entity like uh, Lao. So uh, please uh, take a look at our paper for further details. And in conclusion, so the internet governance and the corporate governance uh, can be applied to assess the governance of DeFi, uh, but uh, further details should be further examined, especially from corporate governance point of view, when we uh, uh, think about centralized point of the DeFi, uh, such as a disclosure requirement or a fair treatment among stakeholders. And the another takeaway is that the current DeFi project could be captured by regulators due to its centralized elements. However, uh, it should be noted that uh, each project seems to be exploring various directions towards further uh, decentralizations or uh, centralizations. So uh, it, it seems it, the uh, project can be polarized into two directions and it, maybe it would make it much more difficult for regulators to properly assess the risk of individual protocols and they implement tailored or risk-based regulatory approaches. 
And the in-depth analysis should be done in consideration of further complicated aspects, such as uh, jurisdictional regulatory gaps and then privacy enhancing the technologies that is applicable to the wider uh, DeFi ecosystem. And that's all from my side. Thank you for listening.